this guy here done. So basically, in these third world countries, it's just taken for granted that kids, young people, women, whoever, are going to be paid or trafficked for their services. And it's sort of accepted, right? It brings in a lot of money. Okay, so when you look at a system like that, you sort of feel helpless. Like you think there's, there's so much that we fight against in, in the first world. You know, we, we try to protect kids, we try to protect children, but then if a whole industry depends on it and is sustained from high levels, the average Joe just feels helpless even just looking at it, right? I mean, I do sometimes. But, but I feel a lot of it can be mitigated just by people looking out for each other. Instead of considering that it's, it's, it's just all just a business, trading people for people, it's just a business. I mean, we get all up in arms these days over slavery, right? The idea of slavery. Oh, it's terrible that the white Americans over there were trading black slaves and there were even black slave traders from the African continent. We get all upset about that kind of slavery, but it's sort of changed. Like, that was it at that time, but now it's... It's still slavery, but it's it's just in different a different demographic. Now it's it's kids. No, it's it's it basically you usually find that the, the kids and young people who are trafficked come from low income societies. They they come from sectors of societies that don't have watchdogs. They come from sectors of society that don't have um, social insurance or, or an abundance of people watching out for them or you know even cameras around they were just supposed to fend for themselves they're basically sitting ducks for whoever comes along not a lot of folks to look out for them so those who are marginalized usually get picked on and picked off right and if they've been in that industry, then they grow up just thinking and understanding that this is just the way the world works. On my level, this is just the way the world works because it happened to me when I was a kid. And that's a business that works. It brings in money. It brought in money for my so-called boss or my handler before. And now I'm a grown-up. What do I do? For most people, you just follow what you the, the most prevalent all the people were doing right before you just see example this is these are examples of how people make a living well this is my experience my handler sold me out to other people so uh, should i become a lawyer i don't know the, my immediate knowledge is about this industry right so then they grow up and maybe they have a kid and they just they, they don't they don't see a kid as something to cherish And invest in without knowing what the what what it's going to bring them right they see a child as a burden and you know what to the average extremely poor person out there a child is a very big burden I mean everyone knows the cost of having a kid these days education alone if you had to go out to work and you have to pay for child care and then is the child care worth the is working with the cost of that I mean, do you even have anything left over it's no joke so anyone who's in a marginalized sector of society very poor or just of a demographic where it's just not easy to get through the day you gotta work so hard just to get through the day right they're gonna be They're, they're also going to be the most likely to 
to trade up kids they know. But I'm going to come back to women. You know, in society, like, men, there's almost like an unwritten code, unspoken, unwritten code for men. Men generally have each other's backs. Have you noticed that? Like out there. Men will hear the story from another man and he'll automatically be, be like, on, not, not, I'm not going to say on his side, but he'll identify with that. Uh, in relationships, there's certain things that men will just go, you know, they understand amongst each other something. But to say in the business world as well, there's a is a guy code, you know, like certain things that they'll joke about or maybe do. I mean, the other guys will understand it because they're guys. But if a female had to see the same thing, she'd be like, "What?" You know. And then they get all angry because of I don't know affirmative action. Anyway, I'm going to come back to that. Basically. Men don't, by default, men don't generally turn on each other. In the societies that I've been raised in and have been aware of, especially first world societies, first world societies, first world western societies, women turn on each other pretty easily. In fact, women turn on each other. It's, it's, it's such a thing that it's the steady diet of the steady material of what, what they make soap operas out of, right? Female jealousy, female revenge, female, female whatever. And, and, and it all, it's all played out between women who hate each other for various reasons. I mean, yeah, you do have the kind of jealous male, but it's not such a a huge thing. Like what I'm talking about is a guy code. Guy is maybe wolf pack mentality. They they just have a an inherent when they come when when a man comes into the space of other males, his back is generally not immediately up. He is not suspicious of the intentions of the other males. However, a woman in a first world western society, a woman coming into the, the company of other females, her back, and for good reason, is usually up. She has to suss out. Now, a lot of people would say the competition, right? The competition. She has to suss out the competition. She has to suss out whether she is of the same level as the woman there, above it or below it, and then adjust her behavior accordingly, depending on whether she wants to get along with them or not. Now, I'm going to come back to that word, the competition. Why are other women regarded as competition? Well, I guess up until now, it's been because uh, you, you regard it as competition in terms of looks, right? Looks or age. Age, looks, age, general beauty, etc. How do you rate physically? Mm, maybe ability to have a baby uh, uh, maybe other things like domestic ability who are basically the ability to catch and secure a man right to catch and secure a man and this has been the way things have been viewed for as long as we've been living in this current system this current system this current system where women see each other as competition. Now why do they 
view each other as competition. Why is it so important that you can catch a man and keep him? Well, so far I guess it has been for economic stability, usually in our societies. It's it's the men who are well, up until now, generally, not so much anymore in Western societies. Okay, it's usually the men that have bought home the bulk, the bulk of the bacon, bulk of the bread, bulk of the salary per month, or bulk of the money in general. The idea is that so that the, the men are the one that. And are, are financially viable, financially stable, most in position to buy property, buy a house, and a house means stability, right? Stability, long-term stability. So this is what, um, and then maybe like father for children, etc. But initially, what a man has symbolized until now for many many cultures is financial stability maybe this wouldn't be the case maybe this won't be the case so much longer if women take themselves start really taking themselves seriously as directing their own life course and taking responsibility for their own finances and where they're going also, I mean, there's it, it, it also comes down to the continuation of a lot of this stuff. You think it's cultural, you think it's just like tradition, you think it's belief. Um, hold up. Often, what a lot of it is, what a lot of it often boils down to, and the, continue, the, the reason it, it just continues is actually antiquated policy. Antiquated policy basically policy or laws that were written a really long time ago for a certain paradigm back then and it worked back then but they just haven't been re revised or ed edited or redacted since that time so I mean in a country a first world country like like America why is it that the men still get a higher sal salary than a woman why is that? Is it the, the maternity leave thing? Um, to my knowledge, these days, not a lot of women are choosing to have babies, especially if they're working in a, a high-level a high level company. And it, it's not like they do less work. Many of them are very competent, but there's still this base thing that in many companies, men still get a higher salary than women. It's curious, but I think may, it may be it's because nobody wants to talk about it. Nobody wants to talk about salary amounts, so nobody ever looks at this, right? It's very rude in society to talk about how much you make, but then if everybody talked about how much they made, then things would be evened up really quickly. And then you also have to think, well, maybe most companies at the moment are headed by men. So, you know, if you were just following from the ideas of the last generation, then you're just going to follow through with that. I'm guessing somewhere there's a, there's a policy, an antiquated policy somewhere that they refer to. Where they say, oh, it's written here in the law that it's usually expected that men do this. And never mind the reasoning, they just sort of follow it because it suits them. I mean, if there's an old antiquated policy that's redundant for what? one sector of, of society but it, it's working for you why would you why would you dispense with it you want to keep it right it's benefiting you okay so it's it's a lot of this kind of stuff and the thing is it's it's people don't like to talk about this in society they don't really like to talk about how men make more money than women but if everybody is kind of like aware of it in the background of their heads this is going to affect how they view themselves, how they view their worth, how children view themselves and their worth as they grow up and they realize, whoa, this is what society is really like. Mm. I mean, maybe kids are taught about 
human rights and equality and all this lovely stuff like in school but then if they happen to leave school and then they learn oh in the real world it's all totally different usually there's a lot of disillusion and a loss of self-worth you just go oh but I'm, 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 I'm never gonna make it up there because I just am not these things to start off with right just um, my my playing level is just that much harder than that other person so yeah I don't know I, I don't know if that's still absolutely the case I remember a few years ago the difference in pay per male and female was it was still a given I don't know if it's like this is this is the year 2020 I don't know if it's still true I actually need to do some research on this I'm gonna write that down some research on pay differences gender pay differences this is what I mean like if if there are generally like people's people's traditions and ideas can change over time but if something is written in law or policy and it was from a long time ago and it worked at that time it worked well for everybody at that time but at this time it's really holding people back we need to go back and redact that we need to go back and change it and you'll find i promise you with with quite a lot of things in society that like you just go god why does this keep happening why does it it's often a lot of the time it's because of old obsolete antiquated policy that just hasn't been changed but it benefits a sliver of society and they know that they know that law that works for them so why would they change it they're the ones that use it well they have the advantage and until other people wake up or maybe women wake up whoever else wake up and go hey that's actually not fair can we change that please they're not going to hand it over easily okay essentially that's what i mean they're not going to hand it over easily yeah